everybody. Happy Tuesday. This is Seychelle Van Poole. And um, I get the distinguished honor of leading our Van Poole Properties Group here at Keller Williams. And I'm so excited you all have chosen to join us today. Um, so welcome to our virtual home seller workshop. And whether you are interested in um, remodeling your home to stay in it, whether you're just curious about the market, and the stats of what's going on here in the North Texas real estate market, or whether you're looking to safely sell your home amid um, lots of interesting changes um, going on on a weekly basis in our market, I wanna welcome you. So thank you for joining us today. And I am gonna go ahead and get us started here. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get going. So um, welcome again, uh, Seychelle Van Poole here. And um, here at Van Poole Properties, we are affiliated with Keller Williams. And um, we have an amazing team of 17 of us that are a combination of real estate agents, of brokers. Many of us, including myself, happen to be real estate investors as well. So we have a very vested stake in the real estate market and how it's doing because Part of it is um, we're investors here too. We wanna make sure we're up to date on the latest trends. Um, our team is honored to be in the top 1% of real estate agents nationwide and also the top 1% of real estate agents here in Texas. And uh, we've been voted best in D Magazine as far as real estate professionals go since 2006. Now, our goals today are very simple. Um, here's what I would like for us to accomplish today with our time together. Um, number one, I want to help walk you through what we're looking at in the market. Our goal for you as real estate consultants is to make sure that we are educating you on the real estate market and showing you what to look for. So if you're considering selling your home, you understand what you need to be paying attention to. The second part is uh, current design trends. If you're thinking about remodeling or even fixing up some things to sell your property, it's always good to know what the latest and greatest are um, as far as design trend goes. The third thing is how to maximize your value. And then the fourth is how to feel safe when we are um, selling houses right now during this time where um, COVID is still with cases rising here in North Texas and across the state. And we wanna make sure that we're doing this in a very safe and effective way. So we'll actually walk you through our safe home seller program that we have. Um, on this photo with me, uh, I have the distinguished honor of introducing you to Barbara Van Poole, who's my mom. She's awesome. And the reason why I bring her up is uh, she started our company on her birthday, which actually is September 11th, 2001. So we actually started here on 9-11, 2001. And uh, the reason why I bring that up is um, I know many of you on our um, workshop here today might remember that in 2001 on September 11th, um, there was a lot of uncertainty. There were a lot of people that didn't want to make major moves. The uh, stock market was reacting very um, emotionally and was very volatile. Um, travel was shut down. A lot of things that we're actually seeing here in the market now resemble what we experienced back in 2001. And I'm proud to tell you that when Barbara got in business that year, um, not only did she do well in business, but she actually was the International Rookie of the Year for the entire Keller Williams International Company. Um, and so from day one, we've really experienced um, uncertain times and transitioning markets. Since that day, we've served over 2,500 clients, totaling over 900 million in sales. Um, and uh, we're honored to help you. So what I want you to do is if you have any questions as we're going through this today, feel free to go ahead and put those up in the Q&A section of our workshop. And I'm gonna make sure we get your questions answered. And if you have any specific one-off needs, I'm gonna give you our contact information a couple of times during our workshop today, where you can reach out to us as well. And we're happy to walk through a very personalized um, set of questions or experiences for your individual needs as well. I wanted to introduce you to our awesome team. Um, we have a great administrative staff and operations team that are licensed and experts is what they do. I've always viewed um, the real estate agent just like an attorney or a doctor's office 
there's a lot of different hats as real estate professionals that we have to wear. And how I've always viewed it as if I walk into my doctor's office, I have one person that's greeting me that is an expert at scheduling and understanding how the time needs to work. Another person, potentially um, either a physician's assistant or a nurse practitioner, is taking my blood work, my vitals, doing my measurements, weighing me in, asking me the initial questions. I probably have a doctor consult um, that is highly focused and targeted around what specific issues I want to ask the doctor on, and they're helping me diagnose my concerns or any questions that I have. Then likely I may go to somebody else for blood work. And I probably am going to deal with somebody else if I have any billing questions or insurance questions. And when we first got into real estate, for us, we had a very similar idea of how we wanted our real estate experience to work, which was we wanted to have highly specialized, very knowledgeable experts in every aspect of the real estate experience, whether it is someone like Tony on our team who comes from the responsive marketing background and understands how to get the right eyeballs on a property to make sure that it's getting the showings and the traffic that it needs to get to generate not just one, but potentially multiple offers. Or whether it's Kristen on our team who's a licensed broker, right, that understands what we need to do from the time a home goes onto the contract to the time it closes. Or Erica on our team who used to run the School of Real Estate here locally and manages all of our listing experience, right? Her licensed background makes sure that we have all of the details and the 120 steps that need to happen to make sure that our sellers feel safe and secure and every little detail is taken care of to the best of its ability. And so um, I say this to let you know that we have over 100 years of real estate experience on our team. We're honored to be uh, here with you today. And uh, we believe in having amazing specialists that help you because we know that that's going to increase your safety. It's going to boost your confidence. And most importantly, we want to generate the results that you desire. Now, I'm going to leave this up for one second, just in case you want to take a picture or write down our contact information. I'll show it to you one or two more times during our workshop today. But just in case you have any specialized questions or needs, I want to make sure you have our contact information. So up on the screen right now is our phone number and our email address in case you need it. And now, without further ado, let's start to looking at the real estate market. Now. We have actually been students of the real estate market for a very long time, for almost 20 years. We have been deep diving into the real estate market. And when we look at it, we look at what a market analysis is gonna show you on a property. So here's how we look at it. What your home is not worth is gonna be, your home isn't worth what you paid for it. And many of you are gonna say, that's great because I want more than that. Um, it's not worth what you need. It's not worth what you want. And it's not worth what your neighbor's house sold for. Some of you might think, oh, well, I actually would prefer it sell for that. And some of you may say, good, because they dropped the bottom out of theirs. <laughs> and what factors are of true value are the first thing is, right, it's true value is what a buyer is willing to pay for your property. It's also what today's market is indicating and what today's competition is experiencing. Today's financing really makes a big difference on that. And I wanna give you an example. Um, when it comes to financing, jumbo loans, um, which is anything above about a $510,000 mortgage amount here in North Texas, jumbo loans um, experienced in April and May a huge contraction in the amount of money that is available out there for um, buyers to be able to get money. And so what happened was the secondary market which is the um, market where if somebody originates a loan, let's say it's prime lending or JP Morgan Chase or Bank of America, right? Insert Keller mortgage, insert in any mortgage company. When they originate your loan, there's usually a secondary market of someone that's willing to extend out, buy that loan, and then they do what's called servicing. So that's where you would send your mortgage statement to each month. And so, the secondary market for jumbo loans or anything over that 510,000 shrank. And we went from having a huge list of um, jumbo secondary market buyers to only one or two companies willing to buy those loans on the secondary market. Well, 
if you're extending out as a lender as Bank of America or Chase or Prime Lending or Keller Mortgage and you're originating those loans and creating those loans and all of a sudden the person behind you that's supposed to buy them isn't willing to buy those loans anymore, then all of a sudden you can't go out and get more loans originated or created because no one's going to buy them from you on the back end. And so that created um, some tension for us in the secondary market. And it also meant that buyers that could have gotten a loan or more favorable terms, let's say in February of this year, might have experienced some tension or tightness and the availability of the loan that they could get um, in March, April, and the beginning of May. What we're seeing now is the jumbo market is loosening up some. So we're seeing some people coming back in, but I will tell you it's not as high as it was even in February. So that can impact then if financing is tighter to get and there's less loans available, that can impact our pricing because that means fewer buyers can get loans than we could have, let's say, um, 90 or 120 days ago. Today's economy, right? The job market is something we watch very closely. Um, you can typically see the job market, the real estate market falls about six months behind it. So whatever happens six months ahead of today is typically where we're going to see the real estate market um, following. The buyer's perception of location makes a huge difference on your market analysis, your home's location, and then also the time it takes to sell in your neighborhood. Now, I want to walk you through two very key numbers that we are watching actually on a daily basis right now here in North Texas. And um, what you're going to see if you read any of the major publications out there, um, it doesn't matter which way it leans or um, who the reporter is, typically what you're going to find uh, news reporters following is what's called the Case Schiller Index. And that's because most real estate economists and economists that are writing for publications don't have access into the MLS don't have access to it on a national scale and usually don't have access to it on a local scale. So what you'll find these reporters writing on is you'll find them writing on what the Case Schiller Index is telling them, which is a national um, tracker for many different parts of the economy, real estate being one of them. And the Case Schiller Index typically reports on a 30-day basis and then on a 90-day basis, on a rolling quarter. And so with that, when you look at the Case Shiller Index, what it reports is it reports inventory and it reports sold. Well, what's interesting about sold data is sold data, yes, when the market's hot can tell you a lot because it can tell you how much inventory is out there, are sales prices going up or down, right? We can see that after the fact. But what it doesn't tell you is when a market is volatile and it's experiencing a lot of ebbs and flows, what you're not gonna see is that it's not gonna tell you how many buyers are willing to buy a house today. It's gonna tell you what somebody was willing to do when they wrote an offer on a house 30 days ago, because it typically takes 30 to 45 days from the time you write an offer or a contract on a home to the time that you go to the closing table and sign your paperwork. And so what we realize when we're experiencing now our third or fourth major shift in the real estate market is we needed to be watching numbers um, of under contracts on a weekly basis. That means how many buyers in the last day or the last seven days are willing to write offers on homes, are willing to put homes under contract compared to the week before or the year before. So back in 2015, um, Erica, our listings manager, and I and Marie Hoke on our team, who's a great real estate coach as well, all had the idea to start tracking the status changes in MLS on a weekly basis. Um, and what that tells us is that tells us how many buyers are willing to write a contract. And so I want you to take a look at this because now that we have five years worth of data that our team has been individually collecting, we can actually see on here 2019 versus 2020, how many buyers were willing to write contracts. So if you take a look, the red line is 2020 and the gray line is 2019. And so what you can see is January comes in and we are 2020 ready. We've got all of our New Year's resolutions ready. We are ready to swan dive into a beautiful, um, what looks to be a real estate market coming into 2020. And keep in mind, 2019 for us in North Texas was a banner real estate year. So it was a great year. Now we swan dive, we get up to the top, we're about to dive off and COVID in mid-March hits. Shelter in place happens. And for those of you that may or may not know, real estate in Dallas County particularly and in Tarrant County became a non-essential function. Meaning that for five weeks after shelter in place happened, real estate was considered non-essential. So for the entire North Texas MLS, the major metro areas, so this goes 
all the way almost to the Oklahoma border, all the way down south of um, DeSoto, almost to Waxahachie, all the way over to Rockwall, Rowlett Heath, and all the way over past White Settlement over to the west. Um, what you'll see is, is that we had a 24% drop from the time shelter in place started in mid-March to the time we started opening back up the state on May 1st. We had a 24% drop in contracts written. So buyers either couldn't see houses, couldn't get out to show, um, or were not sure about their jobs during that period. I think what also happened during that time is you had a period of weeks where when we all were sheltering in place very heavily, that people are staring at their four walls. They're staring at their leases that are about to expire. They're staring at um, the availability now that maybe they need a, a home office. Um, their work isn't sure if they're gonna go back for another nine, 12 months um, into office. And if that happens, well, where am I gonna work from if I need more space or my kids are up on top of me and I'm trying to have Zoom calls, right? I can tell you, I have a six-year-old. I've experienced that myself. Um, and so, you know, people are starting to really reprioritize and look at what they want out of their real estate um, needs. And what happens is that creates massive pent-up demand. So May 1st happens and all of a sudden under contract numbers skyrocket. Look at that red line. So we go all the way up to through June, we've been tracking now. Um, we are running at 135% ahead of 2019 numbers for um, homes going under contract since May 1st. That's a huge number. So what does that tell us, right? That tells us that buyers are willing, ready to just houses, which is awesome. What that also tells us though, is that take a look at these highest number of contract weeks. So this is how many contract status changes in our MLS happened from 2016 up to 2020. You can see that we are running, you know, almost 175% ahead of some of these uh, weeks that we've had previously. And we've already had two weeks this year, either crest 7,000 homes um, with contract changes or 6,935 homes with contract changes in the last um, couple of weeks. So that's a huge number for us to take a look at. Now let's take a look at what's available on the inventory. So particularly if you're considering selling your home, if we look at 2019 versus 2020, you can see when shelter in place occurred, we had a 27% dip in the number of homes that were willing to go on the market. So new listings going on the market means that a seller is sitting on the sidelines, they're getting their home ready, and then they become a new listing on the market. They put their home up for sale. And so we track this because this lets us know the seller's confidence index and in what they're willing to take a look at. We had a 27% dip during shelter in place. And once May 1st hit, we did see that number bounce way up, almost to 2019 numbers. Well, if you take a look at how many buyers are willing to purchase out there, we're running 135% ahead of last year. If you look at our sellers, we're sitting at 6.5% below where we were the same time last year from shelter in place through today. I'm sorry, from May 1st through today. And so that gives us, you know, a four, you know, 41, 41% spread between the amount of buyers willing to buy and the sellers willing to sell. So if you're considering selling, we're in this amazing little pocket here that we have a shortage of homes willing to go on the market. Um, what does that do for us, right? That gives us a shortage, which means there's more pent up buyer demand than we have homes and inventory on the market, right? We have over 8% of the country has participated in some level of mortgage forbearance. We don't know what that's going to do for us moving forward, but we do know that 8% of the homes that have mortgages on them today have taken advantage of forbearance. Now, hopefully all of those homeowners get jobs or start paying their mortgages again, but we don't know six to nine months out what that's going to look like. We do know right now there is a window of opportunity here where we have buyers ready to purchase. Right? We also um, are seeing that if we look at all the major economic outlets, right, we're seeing that there is predictions that we could have an economic shift happen in the next 12 to 18 months. Um, if we have to go back into a firm shelter in place with COVID cases continuing to rise like they are here, there's a possibility the state may get shut down again and that can impact. So we have this opportunity of a strike while the iron is hot if you're considering it, right? And I wish I could say I have a crystal ball. I don't have a perfect one. It's like 
a little murky, but based on past experience, um, I can tell you our predictions so far that we have made for this market from day one of shelter in place have been spot on what we have experienced coming into this real estate market. So I am, I am not a fortune teller by any means, but I do understand how to read real estate data. Our entire team is looking at it on a micro level every single day. And what we're seeing is, is that at basically 650,000 and below, we are in a seller's market. There is a shortage of inventory and buyers are purchasing at massive levels. The more we get up to a million to 2 million, what we're seeing is buyers are willing to purchase, but they are bullish. They have cash on the sidelines. They've either made some additional cash in the stock market because they were smart and doubled down on their investments when the stock market went down, or they pulled cash out of the market and are sitting on the sidelines with it, wanting to make sound decisions. So that doesn't mean deals are not happening in the higher market, but I will tell you that buyers are more bullish in the higher market than they were before. Now, something that I also want you to know is when we're looking at selling a property, 93% of our sellers are selling with multiple offers. And we actually, since 2006, strategically, every single one of our sellers goes through a very specific process we created to generate multiple offers for our sellers. So what we wanna make sure we're doing when we're determining value on your home is that we're looking at your individual home, we're crafting an amazing plan around that, and here's the information that we're gonna go ahead and look to do as quick as we can so that we can assess your property. The first thing we're gonna do is gather information regarding your home. We're gonna compile the current and recent solds in your area, and depending on your price point, that will tell us if we can go back 30 days, 90 days, 120 days, or 180 days. Um, we're gonna to assess together the current competition and the recent solds in your area. The odds are you also know what's going on with your neighbors. Um, we're gonna formulate the most likely sales price and then we're gonna review the expectations of the home selling process. So if, again, I'm putting my contact information up here, if you have a question for us that is specific to your needs, you can either put it in the Q&A and I'll anonymously answer it for you or feel free um, to reach out to us and we can make sure that we're getting you that customized question answered for you. When we take a look at design trends, um, this is really important for you to keep in mind. Um, current design trends are uh, something that a lot of people assume, gosh, I have to go spend tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars on my home to get it ready to go on the market. And what I'm here to tell you is there's ways in which we update to sell, which is different than we update to live. So when you're looking at updating to sell, what we typically look for is I want to see for every dollar that you put into the property, I want to see you get on average $2 back out of it. So I want a two to one return when we talk to our sellers about going on the market. If you're looking to invest to stay, some of these trends may be helpful for you because they'll be around for the next five, six, seven years and will be something that you can enjoy while you live in the home before you sell. The first thing is color trends. Now, Here's a question for you. Um, for those of you that lived through the early 90s, I feel like this feels a little familiar for us. We have the deep blues, the earthy muted greens. I don't know if you remember in the 90s that sage green was really popular. So we're like the dusty rose. Does anyone remember dusty rose? Any hands up on that one? I sure do. Um, we have complex grays are still around, but I'll tell you the grays are getting lighter and lighter and lighter on the walls and moving more to bright whites. Um, as far as the base palette of a house, um, a couple of whites to take a look at are, um, funny enough, Pure White uh, by Sherwin-Williams is a great choice. Alabaster White is another one. Um, double Dove, it's, a, it's called White Dove, and if you do it as a double, 200% um, on the White Dove, it's a really pretty color as well. Um, but whites are really popular. And then a pop of an accent. So a pop of an accent wall is something that we definitely see that's really making a big difference. And then it looks like, oh, we've got a great question, right? So if I were to put my house on the market, how do I keep my house as safe as possible on the market? That's a great question. And I'll actually, after the design trends, I'll walk you through that. Thank you for asking that, Jan. Um, I'll walk you through that and we can show you some of the things that we're doing to make sure that your home uh, selling experience is as safe as possible. Now on the kitchen trends, I want you to take a look here. This is something that I'm, I'm really excited about. 
Um, and that is darker cabinet colors as an accent coming back. White cabinets are still all the rage, um, but I will tell you the darker cabinet color, particularly in the island with a pop of an island color, um, is really setting kitchens off. You'll still see farmhouse sinks or something that we're seeing. Um, but what's interesting is stainless appliances have been around for a really long time and are still very much in style. And we're starting to see in certain pockets of town little accent colors, whether it's um, you know more of a muted um, color of a fridge or muted color appliances, even some black onyx appliances um, are something that's really neat that we're seeing that we didn't see five years ago. Um, also for cooktops, if you can have a gas range, that's something that, especially for somebody who cooks a lot, is very uh, desirable. But if you have small children, something else I would encourage you to take a look at is called an electric induction um, range or cooktop. And what that does is it keeps that consistent heating that a gas flame would give you, but it's a smooth top. So if a child were to get up onto a counter, you don't have open flames, but you have that consistent heating almost like a burner, but it's electric, um, that we've seen some of our higher end listings moving towards to eliminate the open flame in the kitchen. Um, another trend that I'm loving is non-granite countertops. Whether it is, we're seeing stained concrete, we're seeing Caesar stone, which if you haven't Googled that one, check that out. Um, we're seeing quartz and marble and all sorts of different things. One thing I want you to think about is if you're considering marble, marble does stain really easily. So if you're considering marble at all, definitely put it more on a backsplash or somewhere that you're not gonna be chopping strawberries on it <laughs> or spilling uh, tomatoes on it because marble can stain really easily and discolor. Um, so just keep that in mind. You can seal it, but it definitely um, is more vulnerable than some of your more hardy stones. And then the last thing that I'm loving right now in kitchens is our statement ranges. And that is we're seeing anything from distressed hardwood which is your um, range hood, right? This is what goes over the um, uh, oven. You know, if you have ovens or um, cooktop, right? You have a, a little exhaust vent that goes up. So in your range hoods, we're seeing anything from shiplap to cast stone to distressed wood to tile. We're seeing all sorts of really neat um, vena hoods over our ranges that we weren't seeing before. And I'm loving seeing that because I think it's just a really neat trend. Um, now, when it comes to living room, Accent ceilings are where it's at. We're seeing um, grass cloth being put in the middle of wainscoting up there, which is really beautiful. We're seeing distressed hardwoods. We're seeing shiplap making it look almost like a beachy cottage look. But the, the feel that you're going to notice more and more is it's going towards more natural light. We're going towards almost... Um, Scandinavian is the wrong, probably too stark of a modern, but we're seeing those real clean lines, really, really elegant, clean finish out, and less of the Baroque that we've seen over the last 20 years. We're seeing a lot cleaner lines come in as the design trends. And so one thing I would offer to you is um, if you're interested and in maybe even mixing and matching some of your existing things into something that you've um, one, you know, are wanting to purchase to kind of refresh your look without having to replace an entire room's worth of furniture. If you'll reach out to us after this, we will gift you um, a virtual staging appointment with one of our amazing stagers and give you an hour of her time on us um, to go ahead and uh, let you have that consultation and maybe get some ideas or different things from color consults to furniture or finish out. Um, to help you update your rooms um, anywhere in your house that might might be beneficial. So that's that's a little gift from us to you. Now, the other thing I'm loving is fake plants are out. And I'll tell you, air-breathing plants are in. And can I just get a high five on that one? I'm so excited about that. Um, I do realize that I say this, and I have for a long time had a, a black thumb. I did not have a green thumb, but I'm, I'm figuring this out. Um, and I, I just think it adds a lot of warmth to a room when you have fresh, lush greenery in your room. And so if you're considering even just adding a nice warm touch to it, I definitely would highly encourage you to start taking a look at getting some greenery in there. And even Google, there's a couple TED Talks um, that maybe we could put in the notes on this webinar that talk about the plants that either um, uh, help clean the oxygen uh, detox the oxygen or create oxygen for your home. 
And there's been a lot of studies out of air quality in India that are really interesting to study because of the population and the air quality there that are really neat to be able to then incorporate into your home to help increase the oxygen that you breathe. Now, a couple of other things for you to keep in mind on bedroom trends. Back accent walls is an area that you really can create a great pop, whether it is uh, a slight wallpaper, a huge piece of art that you can see on one of the photos below, a wood accent, a trim. Um, we're seeing beautiful walls behind um, master bedrooms right now. And that is just something that I think is so elegant and so beautiful to get to take advantage of. So if you have a master bedroom and you're looking for a wow, think about doing something on the wall behind your master bedroom because that's, that's a real area that you get a great bang for the buck um, and it's something that's really easy to do. The other thing to keep in mind is upholstered headboards are in. Statement lighting is something that's really neat, taking advantage of really beautiful sconce or accent lighting on either side of the beds. And large scale art, kind of gone are the days of the itty bitty a million pictures in the master bedroom and bigger art, bigger photos are definitely something that we're looking more at. Now, if you look at bathroom trends, something that I think is really neat is all the way up floor to ceiling accent walls of tile. Um, and you can see in this home up on the left, this is one of the homes we sold this last year, the builder did a really beautiful job of incorporating in gorgeous, large sheets of tile to be able to go all the way up the wall to create a really warm effect. A couple of other things you can do easily without having to put a lot of money into your home and your bathrooms are switching out mirrors changing out lighting, or even putting rope LED lighting behind your mirror, that's a really simple thing that you can do. Or LED lighting underneath um, your cabinets to have a floating cabinet is something really great. Uh, something that Gwen on our team loves to do is you'll see the baskets. Instead of having all the clutter out on your countertops, putting some nice, elegant baskets that fit the decor for you and shoving everything under under a cabinet and in there is a really nice way to clean up your bathroom as well. But again, out having to invest a ton of money into those spaces. So those are some things that you can do that are really easy and uh, simple. Now let's take a look at if you're looking to maximize your value, how can you look at doing that? And um, Tony, thank you for giving the TED Talk on the plants. That is already in there for you guys on the chat if you wanna take a look at that. So when we take a look at larger projects and you're looking at maximizing your value, your kitchens and your bathrooms are still absolutely where it's at. Those are the areas you get the most bang for your buck back out on. And changing a simple, uh, something as simple as painting cabinets and changing a countertop can completely transform a bathroom or a kitchen, quite honestly. So if you're considering doing those, reach out to us. We're happy to talk you through some of the things that we're seeing um, as far as trends or even what might work best for your individual space um, because we want to make sure that what you're putting in there is really going to flow. And you know, if you're thinking of staying for a while, go ahead and do the remodel now. Um, enjoy it, live in it, appreciate it instead of just waiting to sell um, and updating it for somebody else to enjoy it. You'll notice here too, lighting over the bar is a great way to be able to take advantage of updating your kitchen that's very simple and you could probably watch a YouTube video um, to figure out how to even replace a lighting, you know, light kit by yourself. Um, and the other thing to consider is the, there used to be a big trend where you would have a kitchen island or you would have the kitchen and then you would have a raised breakfast bar that goes out and then bar stools around a raised breakfast bar. What we're seeing a lot of kitchen remodels do now is cut off the top of that sheetrock where that breakfast bar used to be up high and taking the countertop flat all the way across the island so that it really gives it a nice big open feel from a kitchen to a breakfast area or a kitchen to a, um, a living room. So if you're considering that, that's something just to keep in mind as well. Now, when we look at interior projects, here are the things that are easy for you to do yourself that you may not have thought of. We've talked about lighting. Ceiling fans are something else that's really easy for you to be able to do, and it really pops a room. It, it can date or update a room really easily, okay? Cabinet hard, uh, cabinet drawer hardware. I will tell you what, that is something so simple to do and it makes a huge difference when you walk into a room and the cabinet pulls or the cabinet hardware has been updated. And for a couple of hundred dollars, you've completely transformed the way either a furniture piece feels or a bathroom or kitchen might feel. Um, decluttering, we 
hopefully are not going back into shelter in place, but I'll tell you with more time home than we've ever had, take advantage of tackling a drawer a day or a little spot of your house a day to declutter and take advantage of those bulk trash days in order to be able to get that home whipped into shape. Now, if you're considering painting, that's something you can easily do yourself and uh, you can order it online. I know Sherwin-Williams, Home Depot, and Lowe's are also doing where you can order paint and just drive up and pick up and they'll come bring it out to your car, which is great. And then also just think about it too, right? What would a buyer appreciate? And that's overall cleanliness. So that's something that you really can take advantage of. Now, when we look at projects on the outside, there's a few things that you can do that really make a huge difference when it comes to your home's value and also um, how your home presents. The first one I want you to take advantage of is landscaping, right? This is something you're outside, you can hire somebody to do without coming into your property or is easy for you to be able to do um, as we've had a couple of days that are rainy and, and definitely you know, watering our plants. So landscaping is great for summer. Begonias, um, pink or red, are a great summer plant. So is yellow lantana that really blooms beautifully right now. And then purple butterfly flower, butterfly plants, um, is a really great North Texas, hardy, heat tolerant summer plant that gives a really nice pop. Um, something to consider for winter are gonna be your pansies. Pansies do great here in North Texas in a bright color. Instead of doing a bunch of multicolors, doing one solid heavy color of a yellow or a blue or a purple, uh, really make a big statement on your landscaping. Now something I will tell you, I, I really didn't believe in this until we did this in our own home, is window cleaning. I know that sounds silly, but think about it. How often do you really scrub those windows inside and out and clean off all of those cobwebs off of your window screens? It can make a home go from dingy to beautiful with just a couple of hours of window washing. So consider that when you're looking at doing some updating because that can really make a house feel so much better. Um, also cleaning up your heating and air conditioning units, trimming trees back from the roof or up away from the view of the home, right? Go and stand at your drive and um, go stand at your front walkway all the way at the street. And I want you just to cross your arms and kind of look. And I want you to time yourself for about 60 seconds and I want you to very slowly just look across your property and see what you notice. And I think that will give you a good feel for what a buyer is going to notice, right? Most of the time when we pull up to our home, we see the back of the house or where the garage is, not necessarily where the front is. So spending some time where buyers are actually going to spend will help kind of give you some guidance. Now, one thing that I really want you to take into consideration is selling a home right now, we realize is a a nervous time for someone to put their home on the market. We get a lot of questions around it. And so very early on when shelter in place happened and we literally couldn't get buyers through properties because we weren't allowed to show them, we created our safe home seller program. And the process that we go through to help make sure that we are eliminating as many feet through your home as possible and maximizing how many views we're getting on your home as possible is really an important science that we have really been working hard at. So a couple of the things that we are really noticing is, is that buyers want to make an informed decision. And one of the things that I am so grateful for is that we deal with a lot of clients that are relocating to Texas from somewhere else. And because of that, that means that our buyer might be living in California or Michigan, or we've actually had a lot of relocations recently from New York and New Jersey or Florida, right? We've got buyers coming in from all over. And because our market's been so hot, oftentimes they're relying on us to be their eyes and ears to do video tours of the property and to make offers on the home before they're able to even see it in person. And I'll give you a real life example of this. My husband and I just are selling one of our rental properties here in Texas, and we're doing a 1031 exchange to buy a lake house up in Michigan. And we are personally under contract on a lake house up near his family in Northern Michigan without having walked the property ourselves. So I can tell you, I have experienced this process personally myself in the last 30 days because we're in the middle of it as well. And so what I want you to take a look at is 25% of our home buyers that we worked with in the last year actually bought their home via video, whether it was FaceTime, Zoom video, or Google Hangout, or some sort of a video um, interface. We walk the property for them. 
then what we're doing for our sellers on top of that is we're also giving the buyer a feel for what it feels like to walk the home because pictures, as I'm sure all of you would agree, can be very deceiving. So we wanna make sure we're giving an accurate representation of what the home is like while highlighting the most appealing features. So we do this through a couple of different ways. We either do a detailed floor plan, we do a Matterport, which is almost like a, it looks like a doll house where you can kind of rotate it around, or a 3D home tour, depending on the home size and how we think it's gonna be most effectively done. And the other thing that we're doing, which we're loving since we've been using video for so long, is we're actually doing Zoom and FaceTime tours, virtual open houses and video walkthroughs where you might have the seller, the seller's agent on one set of video and the buyer and the buyer's agent on another set of video. And we're literally walking the property with them on video. And the first time the buyer sees the home is when it's already under contract. So we're working to eliminate as many feet through your home as possible while maximizing your interest. And so what we do is we, we keep, whether it's the floor plans, the Matterport or the 3D home tours, we're sending those out almost as your first viewing. We're sending those to the interested buyers or buyer's agents before the buyers are seeing the property to confirm that this is something they really wanna see before we're asking a seller to leave their home. Now, I, we can send you an actual video of how this gets set up in the house, but we have a clean home initiative that we use. So anytime a buyer is walking through one of our seller's houses to physically come see it, there's a couple of things that we ask them to do. The first is to wear masks. We ask that everybody walking through the property wears a mask and that only the key decision makers walk through. So if there is a buyer that might have a lot of children, if there's a way for them to have those kids stay with a family member while they come view the home, we're gonna ask that they do that. And the second thing is we're gonna ask that they wear gloves or use hand sanitizer coming in and out to minimize the amount of germs that are being um, used with hands. And on top of that, we ask our sellers to go ahead and minimize touching for buyers by leaving all the lights on, opening up all the interior doors, so that when a buyer's walking through the home, they really shouldn't have an excuse to have to open up a lot of doors um, unless we're already under contract and doing an inspection, right? And then the third thing that we're looking to do is we're, we're wanting well-qualified, motivated buyers. So we're working to move buyers further down the funnel to be able to make educated decisions on a property instead of just anybody who wants to be a looky-loo coming in. And I think that that's really important. So when we take a look at those things, we're really able to make sure that we are doing everything that we can to make this process as safe as possible. And we do have some sellers even asking us, which we're happy to do, to have buyers sign statements of a COVID waiver stating that as of the day they're walking the property, they do not have a temperature on um, in anyone in the party right now. And so we're willing to do that as well to make sure that we're making it as safe as possible. Now, a couple of things that we're also able to do is either in person with masks and socially distanced or virtual staging, which means that the stager can actually walk your property with you. We pay for it. Our, our professional designers and stagers can walk your property with you and use your things to help guide you in how to make your home as beautiful and professional as possible. We wanna make sure that those photos look amazing. Right? And so we want those designers to help you work with your things to make the home feel as open as possible. Especially when we're using photography, we wanna make sure that that photography really represents your home. Now, the other thing that we're doing a lot, and I'm, I'm loving this, is our designers have the ability to actually place staged furniture in your home virtually. So if you have rooms that may not be furnished the way you want them to be, instead of paying thousands of dollars to bring furniture through your home, you can see two real life examples of empty rooms and then where we had our professional designers place furniture in your house. We can actually transform a room virtually now with our professional designers um, using their time and energy to do that. And then photography really makes a difference. Who you work with now more than ever makes a difference because we have to rely on our marketing in order to be able to go and effectively attract buyers to your home. And so what I want you to take a look at is these are the same house, but one side is for the previous agent that they were listed with and could not successfully sell. And if you look at the screen on the right hand side is our professional photographer coming in using their skills and our professional marketing. We have this home under contract in seven days for the exact same price. Isn't that amazing? And look at what a difference that kitchen made. That kitchen feels so small on the one side, and it feels very open 
to the family room. You can even see it's open to the living area, right? On the other side, it makes a big difference with who you work with. And so with 95% of our buyers starting their search online, it's really important that we are using everything in our arsenal to bring you a great buyer to your property. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, share with you a, a testimonial actually from one of our fantastic clients that was one of our first clients we worked with um, coming, into, coming into shelter in place and I thought no one can share the experience more than someone who's been through it. And um, oh great, we had one question from Gary. Gary is asking, um, if I receive multiple offers, how long do I have to choose one? It's a great question, Gary. So because we deal with multiple offers on a daily basis, what we look to do is we look to make sure we are honoring the first offer that came in. And if we're able to generate multiples, which again, a lot of the time we're able to do, we set a highest and best timeline that everybody has to submit in offers. And typically we'll have that afternoon or evening to review all the offers with you. And then we'll present our responses in the morning first thing. So typically you're looking at anywhere from 10 to 12 hours for us to really evaluate all the offers. And what we do is we create a spreadsheet for you that shows you every offer, the terms, because sometimes price isn't always the most important thing. Sometimes it's qualifications. Sometimes it is the lender that they're working with. Um, we've seen all sorts of deals blow up um, over the years for a number of things. And sometimes it's not always the highest price is the best one. Sometimes it's the second highest, but much stronger negotiating terms. So we'll help guide you to evaluate those offers and make sure that you know which offer is going to be your first and second strongest. And then we're going to ask anybody that didn't win if they would like to be a backup offer. So we have a better negotiating position on the inspection period. Now, here's Christy. I'll let her share with you her experience as well. Cheers to Van Poole Properties. I'm sitting here enjoying a glass of wine because I sold my house today. Uh, that can be a scary proposition um, in any climate, but at a world pandemic, and it's very uncertain and very scary. Uh, nonetheless, Vanpool Properties are a team of professionals. Uh, they adjusted to the market, and it was easy breezy. Uh, this is the second house I have uh, bought and sold with Vanpool, and it was just as easy this time during a pandemic as it was the first time around. So kudos to their team and to adjusting to the market. And if you have a home to sell or to buy, or you're in the market to buy, uh, reach, <laughs> reach out to Van Pool today. <laughs> so Christy is fantastic and that's her daughter Coco. And they are now successfully living by the beach, which was her dream in Southern California. And what a great time for them to get there because uh, she gets to go to the beach, a very quiet, secluded, beach with nobody else on it every day, which was her dream. So she's getting to live her best life and her dream right now, which I just love. Um, we have a couple of minutes left here before we are wrapped up. So I um, am going to take a couple of other questions to make sure that we're honoring your time. And we will wrap up right at or right before um, the hour mark. So thank you all for joining us. And uh, let's make sure we're getting a few of your one-off questions answered. Um, Donna wants to know what's the most important thing to ask agents when interviewing. Um, that's such a good question. Thank you for asking that, Donna. Um, you know, one thing that um, I will tell you is we actually have a questionnaire that we'd be happy to send you if that's something that you would like um, that we can email over to you for specific questions. But I'll tell you one of the most important questions that I have seen is for you to ask the agent, um, dear Mr. Real Estate Agent, what do you do when you get an offer on my home? And their answer, depending on how they answer, should let you know how professional they are and how good of a negotiator they are for you. It will also tell you if you're leaving money on the table. So I'm gonna give you the answers that you wanna look for, but Donna, I'm gonna say it right now. You have to promise me that you are not gonna give them the answer that they're supposed to tell you or you've just giving it all away because they're going to say, well, of course, that's what I would do. So as long as you promise to stay quiet when you ask the question and let them answer, this will tell you what you need to know. So you're going to ask Mr. Real Estate Agent, what do you do when you get an offer on my home? And what a um, basic agent, an inexperienced agent will do is immediately call you and present. What a, an experienced agent, but maybe not a crazy negotiator will do is they'll call the lender first and then they'll call you to make sure they're calling the lender to make sure that that buyer is indeed qualified. But what 
a real professional should do is, and our team actually has been doing this since 2006, so I can tell you it makes a huge difference. Um, what a real professional will do is that they will go back through and call or notify every single person that has showed any interest in your home and give them a courtesy note to let them know that we've received an offer on your home. Uh, the second thing we'll do is interview the lender. And the third thing we'll do is actually call and interview the buyer's agent to truly understand the buyer's motivation before presenting the offer to you. Because I know that just when I walk into a store and I see someone take the last shirt or the second to last shirt off the rack, all of a sudden I hadn't paid attention to that outfit before. But now that somebody else wants it, it becomes that much more appealing. It's the exact same thing that happens with your home. So we always go for multiple offers. We never stop with just one. And that's part of the beauty of having a real estate team like we do because it takes us an extra hour and a half to two hours per client in order to be able to do that. And without having the benefit of a real estate team of professionals working on your behalf, it's a lot of extra time. And most real estate agents don't have the time to be able to do that. So we really make sure that we take the time to get you not only the best negotiating position, but also the most money. And we know when we can get multiple offers that that happens. Now, also James, great question. How long does it take to list my home? Well, part of that depends on what you wanna do. If we have some updating that we think would benefit you and you're open to doing it, and that's something you wanna do, then it would be however long it takes your contractors or some of the ones on our great vendor list uh, to get in and out efficiently in your home. If we don't have to do that, we can have you on the market um, as soon as probably 48 to 72 hours or as long as a week to two weeks, just depending on how long you need to finish up the homework from your staging appointment. I will tell you, um, our National Association of Realtors uh, rules for marketing homes changed on May 1st of this year. And what they stated is, is that we used to be able to market a property as a coming soon property. Um, as long as we want it. So you could be coming soon for months before you ever hit the market. And now what we're seeing is that um, we have to put you into MLS as soon as you, the seller, or us, the agent, start marketing your home anywhere publicly. So that means Nextdoor, Facebook, tw uh, Instagram, Twitter, email lists, that. Um, as soon as we start marketing you publicly, we have to put you in MLS within 24 business hours. So what you'll start to see is that Fridays will start to be the coming soon day and Mondays will start to be the days you hit MLS because that is the longest period of time we can get business hours in between that 24 hour pre-marketing timeframe. So with that, I just want you to know that's probably going to be the most effective day to hit the market is going to be Monday and with our pre-marketing strategy hitting on Friday. So again, we'll work around whatever your schedule needs are, but that tends to be more than likely what we'll see the trend moving towards um, as we grow. So I just, I wanna thank you all for taking time out of your very valuable days um, to come and spend it with us. We are here to help. We're here to be advocates for you. We're here to assist you. And if there is anything um, that we can do to help make your process easier or educate you, we're here to do it. So thanks you all. We hope you have a fantastic day. Stay safe. And uh, we're here to help. Have a great one.